Okay, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion of antibodies by focusing on the idea of antibody class. Uh, antibodies come in different varieties that have different functions, and we refer to those different subfamilies of antibodies as antibody classes. So uh, what are these classes? Well, you may have heard some of these terms before, uh, but antibodies have five overall classes. Uh, they are referred to by the names IgG, IgD, IgE, IgA, and IgM. Ig stands for immunoglobulin, as we as we said before, and what determines the class or the last letter in the name is actually the isotype of the heavy chains of that antibody. Uh, so if you look here, you can see that in IgG uh, we have a variable heavy, which we expect, but within the constant heavy chains we see that we have constant gamma one, C gamma one, C gamma two, C gamma three. So a gamma heavy chain makes an antibody IgG, gamma equals G. Same thing for the rest. We can see here for IgD, we have delta, IgE, we have epsilon, IgA, we have alpha, and IgM, we have mu. So the type of heavy chain determines the class of the antibody. Um, and as you can see, the different classes of antibodies have slight uh, uh, structural variations. So, uh, for example, while IgG and IgD um, have three constant segments, IgE has four. Uh, IgA and IgM are both uh, multimeric antibody structures, so IgA is, forms these dimers held together by a J chain. Um, IgMs form these huge pentamer things, um, uh, also uh, held together by uh, disulfide bonds and J chains. Um, Ultimately, uh, the, the overall structure of the antibody is going to influence the different types of effector functions that it can have, as well as things like its binding avidity, as we discussed in the last lecture. Um, so let's look a little bit uh, more closely at the things that distinguishes these different classes of antibodies. Um, so uh, this chart sort of nicely breaks down some of the major things that I think are important. So uh, remember that uh, the class is determined by the type of the heavy chain, so you can see those listed here. If you don't uh, normally recognize Greek symbols, uh, these five I think are very important to be able to, to read um, in any kind of scientific setting, but especially in immunology. So uh, uh, you should be able to recognize mu, gamma, alpha, epsilon, and delta. And you should be able to tell that uh, if you have an epsilon heavy chain, you're going to be uh, dealing with an IgE antibody and so on. Um, the sizes of the antibodies, their molecular weights uh, are variable across uh, the different classes, as you can see. Probably not surprisingly, the ones that are multimeric are the biggest, so the dimers are, uh, are the second biggest. These pentameric IgM structures are the largest, um, not, not too surprising there. Um, the other important thing about these different antibodies is that we have different relative concentrations of them in the serum. Um, that's because they all do slightly different things and we need more of some than others. Uh, for the most part, IgG is kind of the most like stock generic antibody. Often when we're talking about antibodies, you can sort of assume we're talking about IgG. And that's because over 80% or around 80% of the total antibody concentration in the serum is made up of IgG antibodies. And uh, they do most of the things that we've talked about that antibodies are important for. So they can, uh, they can uh, lead to the fixation of complement, they can neutralize toxins, they opsonize things. So all of those antibody effector functions that we've focused on so far, most of them IgG can accomplish. And so uh, it's, like I said, kind of the, uh, the most uh, you know, normal antibody. Um, you can see that you know the others we have various concentrations of. The rarest antibody is IgE. IgE in particular is very important for allergic responses, in particular to large parasites like worms. Um, and so we actually don't need as much of it uh, because it does something pretty specialized. And so for that region, I, reason, IgE is relatively rare in the circulation. Um, the, the various things that the different antibodies do and their specific functions is actually the topic of a future um, module where we talk about humoral immunity. Um, so uh, the functions of these antibodies is not what you need to focus on uh, for this lecture. What I want to stress in this slide is that um, the type of heavy chain determines the class of the antibodies, so you should be able to recognize the heavy chains and which class they go with, um, as well as, uh, you know, I think it's important to, to know that IgG is the most common and IgE is the rarest. Um, so um, beyond this, um, what I want to talk about, instead of memorizing all the different functions, let's talk about what determines the function of an antibody or which types of effector functions it can, it can uh, induce. So um, I said before that 
antibodies are able to bind to immune receptor or to immune cells. Um, this happens through their FC regions, so the fragment constant regions. And so um, if, we, if we look at our antibodies, uh, remember that the variable region binds the antigen, and then the um, FC region is what binds to the immune cell to activate some kind of effector function. So the type of FC receptor, the receptor on the surface of the immune cell that actually sees the antibody, the type of receptor that is going to be able to sense that antibody is going to depend on the class of the antibody. So remember that the FC region is made up um, ex um, entirely of heavy chain. So uh, the, if we're dealing with a mu or a gamma or an alpha heavy chain, that's going to determine the type of FC receptor that uh, the antibody is able to activate. And then the type of uh, FC receptor that the antibody activates is then going to determine what the downstream biological outcome is of that, of that association. So um, a couple of major points that I want to make here is that um, unique FC receptors determine the type and the strength of antibody effector functions. So um, again, there's uh, you know a whole bunch here. The point of this slide is not to memorize all these different FC receptors, um, but I do want to make a couple of points. One is that you can see here that these are all types of FC gamma receptors. So these are all receptors that recognize uh, gamma uh, heavy chains in the FC regions of antibodies they would not recognize IgA or IgM or IgE. Uh, these would be receptors that would uh, uniquely recognize IgG FC domains. Um, and so what you can see is that um, there are all sorts of different ones, and they all um, have a different combination of both function and affinity. So some FC gamma receptors activate the cell, so they turn on immune functions. Some FC receptors actually inhibit immune function. Um, some of them have really high affinity for FC gamma, uh, and some have low affinity for FC gamma. So, um, you know, what I'm trying to point out here is that FC receptor activation is not one size fits all. Um, uh, an FC gamma uh, uh, heavy chain could activate a cell or it could inhibit it, or, and it could do it at very high concentrations or it could do it at very low concentrations. That's gonna depend on which specific set of FC gamma receptors that cell expresses. And you can extend that logic to all the other types of FC, so FC uh, epsilon receptors, FC alpha receptors, et cetera. So um, again, the unique complement of FC receptors that a cell expresses is gonna determine what happens when that cell binds to an antibody. Um, so uh, that's that point. An additional point is that different types of immune cells express unique combinations of FC receptors. So again, focusing on the, the human IgG receptors here, um, you know, some of them were activating, some of them were inhibiting, some were high, some were low affinity. You can see that if we take all of the different immune cells, as well as some non-immune cells, which are capable of, of recognizing FC, um, you can see that um, each of these expresses a different combination of FC receptors. So what this means is that in some cells, uh, FC gamma might activate them. In some cells, it might inhibit them. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a, quite a bit of very fine molecular tuning going on here. Um, and this is important because some cells need to be activated by antibodies because they're important for inducing early uh, immune responses, for example. And then some of our cells need to come in and kind of clean things up or turn the immune system back down a little bit. And so, um, you know, they recognize the same stimulus, but uh, the activation of a different set of receptors causes them to have the opposite biological output, basically. Um, so, uh, you know, again, uh, you don't need to know which cells express which ones. This is not a memorization slide. Uh, the, the conceptual point here is important that different types of immune cells have their own unique combinations of FC receptors, and that's going to determine what they do when they bind to the FC region of an antibody. So we're going to talk about just a couple of examples of things that FC receptors do, um, just for illustration purposes. Um, so one of the major things that FC regions on antibodies do is actually accomplish the opsonization function. So of course, the FAB domain, the variable domain of the antibody, is going to bind to the antigen. Uh, and uh, we've talked about that quite a bit. So uh, antibodies serve as opsonins by binding to uh, their, their target epitopes on the surface of antigens. But it's actually the FC region that induces phagocytosis by binding to FC receptors on the surface of the phagocyte 
the activation of that FC receptor is what actually um, induces internalization of the phagosome, uh, leading to internalization of the pathogen. So you need both antigen binding uh, by the FAB uh, region, but also um, activation of the phagocyte by the activation of an FC receptor by the FC region of the same antibody. So this is one important thing that FC receptor signaling accomplishes, one of the major effector functions of antibodies. Um, another one that we've alluded to a couple of times is that uh, FC receptor activation is a important signal for degranul degranulation of granulocytes. So, for example, basophils and mast cells, which, um, as we've heard, um, secrete histamine, and they have uh, that within the cytoplasmic granules uh, in, that they that they possess, as well as other antimicrobial molecules. Um, degranulation can happen multiple ways, like things like anaphylatoxin signaling, for example. But also FC receptor activation induces degranulation of, of many granulocytes. And so, for example, on a mast cell, if you activate an FC epsilon receptor, um, that induces degranulation. You get the release of histamine. Uh, histamine attacks the, the tissues of the, of the extracellular parasite, like worms. Um, and this is a very important part of our uh, immune defense against helminths, uh, large, large worm pathogens. Um, so again, just an example of one of the many things that FC receptor activation does. Uh, but we absolutely need both parts of the antibody to accomplish this. We need uh, the antibody to be bound to the worm, right? But we also then need the FC portion of the antibody to activate the immune cell to actually induce the effector function, in this case, degranulation. Okay, so much for uh, antibody class. Let's summarize. Uh, antibody FC regions bind to immune cells and they induce their effector function. So we just discussed this. Uh, FC regions are bind by FC receptors or FCRs. They can induce things like phagocytosis, degranulation, etc. Uh, we'll get into more uh, a more detailed list of their effector functions in a later lecture. Um, antibodies are divided into five overall classes. Uh, they are determined by the heavy chain isotype. And so that heavy chain isotype is going to determine if an antibody is IgA, D, E, G, or M, uh, immunoglobulin A or D, E, G, or M, etc. Um, and remember that uh, the letter comes from the uh, Greek symbol representing the heavy chain isotype. So alpha is A, delta is D, and so on. Antibody classes have multiple FC receptors, so each class can be recognized by multiple FC receptors. Uh, and those specific FC receptors are going to me mediate different signaling outcomes. So even uh, within uh, receptors that recognize uh, uh, FC gamma, um, some FC gamma receptors are inhibitory, some are activating, etc., as we saw. And an additional layer of regulation occurs because cells express their own unique combination of these different types of FC receptors. And so, uh, you know, the, the relative amount and the relative type of FC receptors a cell expresses is going to determine what happens when it sees the FC region of an antibody. Okay, uh, that uh, covers it for uh, uh, antibody class. Uh, in the next lecture, we're going to talk a little bit more about antigen binding, but this time uh, not by B cells and antibodies, but by T cells. So we'll talk a little bit about T cell receptor binding and activation. See you then.